on it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. But I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right, right now. I want y'all to click that like button, that subscribe button, and that follow. And check us out on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. We're on there. But if you want to see our full-length interviews before anybody else see any of the content, check out our Patreon channel and also our YouTube channel, Membership. So subscribe for our membership, and you'll see it before everybody sees it. Man. All right, thank you in advance. Man, we got a guy on here, y'all. He don't need no introduction, man. He's come, he come by way of Mississippi, man. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Playing no What's games, up, man. man. I, he got a podcast. We're going to get into all that, man. This guy right here, man, Heartbeats is in the building. One yes, of the coldest producers, beat makers, engineering guys you ever want to run into, ain't, man. He ain't got a heartbeat, he ain't breathing. Man. That's fact. What's going on, brother? Same, same, same thing, different day, bro. This Boss Talk 101, man. Thanks to be in Dallas, man. Say, man. man. Welcome to Dallas, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, it's going down. And man. Yes, sir. And man. I got to ask you, what is the halo over the heroes for? Both of my logos are positive stuff, right? So I feel like, you know how people like kill them all rather than not... I don't know if there's an actual kill them all rather than, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. no, no shot to them, but okay. I just feel like, you know... Um, heroes and save, saving people, saving people's career. Like maybe not saving people's career, but let's say you had you were trying to find some good beats, and you, you know you just wasn't hidden. Come holler at the heroes. You feel what I'm saying? They gonna save you. So that, that's basically what that is. Okay, yeah. I got it. And I like heart, heart I like beats, it. All my all my beats come from the heart. Okay. So, yeah, so, so. Okay. So before we get into how you started it and all of that, um, I want you to. Tell me what was it like growing up? Do you have siblings? Yeah, I got two sisters and a little brother. And a little brother. So you were really like big brother to everybody then? No. Nah. No? I, I mean, I was <clears throat> next to the youngest. Yeah. yeah, like how far apart were you? Well, my sister's a year older than me, and then okay. my other sister, like six years older than me. Than but being my, the first boy, you know, first boys are usually be like, they act like they even the oldest, even although they're not the oldest one, but because you're the boy. Yeah, yeah I can see that. It's, that's the reason why I was like, you're like the big brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of. Well, well my, maybe to my little brother, but my sisters and them, I don't know, they were just. Oh, they manhandle you. Man, now nah, they ain't manhandle me, they just. They manhandle other people. Okay. So they didn't need that. I ain't gonna lie. But I done seen my sisters, two, both my sisters jump a dude with two, or two by fours. Bro. No. Six, six, in the hospital. Really? Yeah, my sisters want nothing to play they with. They don't me. play. Yeah. Not wow. Mm -mm. Shout out to my sisters, man. One of them's a scientist now. She's a. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, she's a, I, I, I don't want to say it wrong. She's a uh, oceanographer, a marine scientist. Oh, <clears throat> but yeah, she, yeah, uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. She actually got paid to get a master's degree. Marine she, biologist. Yeah. Is that what she is? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. If she okay. got paid to get a master's degree. Like, she's super, 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 mm. super smart. Like, What she, city is she live in? New Orleans. New Orleans? Mm. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so shout out to my other sister. She, you know, she's just a family a family woman. Um, mm -hmm. Raised all of her kids. She got two more to, um, to cross that line at, you know, the graduation. But oh. one, of them, uh, one of them, my nephew, he plays football for Ole Miss. Oh, um, that's dope. Yeah. His name is he DJ good? Ruff. Oh, yeah, he's super good. What yeah, position? So, he got he tight in. He got mm. a, he got a full full year uh full full ride full, yeah full ride wow four year scholarship. He's super good though. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So were y'all raised by mom and dad in the household or? Man, I ain't gonna lie. My 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 childhood is like a puzzle, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's, Why? All right, I'm from Oregon, but <clears throat> wait a minute. You say you from Oregon or you from Mississippi? I'm now from you don't. Yeah, you I both moved to Mississippi at eleven. Okay. Okay. I really didn't move. I got sent down here. So, uh, so a lot of stuff was going on in Oregon before I was eleven. You got sent. Yes, I got sent down here. So hold on, who were you living with in Oregon? Let's put my the mom, puzzles together. My mom. Not your dad. No, nah, my dad was gone. My mom got remarried to a guy. Okay. My pops was gone for like I didn't know where he was for like three years. But you knew your dad. Yeah, I knew my pops. They was married at first, and, and um. My pops used to beat me a lot, so she ended up divorcing him because of that. Like, mm. like, Why like, did he just beat you? Because I was the boy. You the only my, boy? Were you bad? Yeah, but it was kind of like my conditions. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it, I'm three. I remember one time at three years old. Like, I got a, I got a whoop. I got beat going down the stairs. Like, 
He whooped me the whole way while I'm falling downstairs to the point where... At they, three? Yeah. Like, I've been through the same thing. His, for playing with his walkie-talkie thing. Like, my daddy was... Like, my, my daddy was strict, too, so I hey, get it. I went to school the next day. They took us clean out, like... And we foster home and shit after that. Yeah. Mm. So, like, um, she ended up leaving my pops. She got remarried to a guy that eventually ended up getting drunk, kidnapping her, held, holding her hostage Damn. in my grandma house. And this happened in... In Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. And, um, so how old were you when she divorced your dad? See, 11. They was married. I was probably like seven, eight. Seven, eight. Yeah, something okay. like that. Did you ever see her, him beat on your mom too? Or he was he just... He did, would never. He nah, would just hit nah, you. Nah, yeah. My dad had a drinking problem back then. Me and my dad like best of friends now. Now. Yeah. Back then he had a drinking problem. And I guess whenever they separated, like, it, you know, it reflected, you know... Reflected mm -hmm. on him because when we came back, like when we got sent down here back to him, so he was down here. <clears throat> yeah, when we got sent back down here to Mississippi, he was a whole different person, you know. Like, mm. it, it, like if we got a whipping in, it's gonna be later on in the day when he's not mad no more, and it's gonna be right on our butt. We got to stand in front of him. He gonna, you know, hit us right on our butt. So he, each time. He, so he recognized he made a mistake. Fact. So mm -hmm. the reason why you got sent down, okay, so go back to she got kidnapped. Um, that's, that's ultimately why, why why I got sent down here. My mom was kidnapped by her uh, in, her they, husband. They could look it up. She was about to divorce him, and uh, they were separated as far as living. <clears throat> we had our own house, and which one day he came at like 2 o'clock in the morning while we was all asleep, and he come to kidnap her and bring her to my grandma's house. It was like maybe 40, 50 miles away from us and because she owned a lot of property on a mountain so they went and that's her. her mom it's her mom okay that's what her adopt my mom was adopted at birth so oh. that's her adopted mom okay lady. but um he held a hostage out in her barn until mm. like six or seven that morning something like that by that time my grandma had called the police they had the building surrounded because she was there she was okay. there and uh she ended up i don't know how she ended up getting away she ended up fooling him kind of getting away and and uh he ended up going out to chase her, and the building was surrounded by all the police. He got and, shot. Yeah, the, uh, he, the negotiator. He had pointed the gun at the negotiator, but then he turned around and put the gun in his mouth, and that's when the police shot him, like, seven times to kill him, like, right there in front of my mom and everybody. So like, But he was already about to kill himself. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so that kind of made me, like... I ain't gonna lie, cause I he was a cool pops to me. He was a social worker, had bread, like you know he was Good a cool. Dude. He was a cool step pops. I never he seen loved that side of him. Your mom, he didn't want so. Then <sighs> no, nah, I ain't gonna get into it's that. It, 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 yeah. it, it was crazy. So uh, so it, it kind of made me like, man, I was in and out of like juvenile the homes for you know boys, mental institutions like mm, because foster it messed care. Up your all mind. the kids end up going to foster care. You know what I'm saying, like. Mm -hmm. And so it's, my mom ended up going crazy, like, and she's straight now, like. Um, Did y'all ever, the kids had to split up, like, yeah, when y'all went to foster care? Because like, sometimes they keep to them a, together. I went to a horrible foster home. What happened? This just the foster parents, like, they were just, I don't, they were super old for one. They were mean. It's like they only just wanted kind of like a little, somebody to clean up around the house type, okay. you know, like a, my my Cheerios, they used to put orange juice in it because they didn't eat milk, so I got to eat Cheerios and orange With juice. orange juice. You feel me? My sister and my brother, my older sister, she was she was old enough to live with my mama. Okay. But my, my younger sister, the ones that closer to my age, mm -hmm. and my brother, they went to a uh, a foster a foster home with horses and, like, loving parents, and, like, Aww. they still cool to this day right now, and they had But you just property, had the luck of the draw. And they had each other. Mm -hmm. I'm over there. Way on the other side of town with these old folks. I don't even know who they is. Like that's how much of a, they didn't have no impact in my life. You feel what I'm saying? My yeah. brother, I'm still cool with the other lady. You feel me? But well, that's that's the part. Hey man, that's your story, man. And and yeah. and, and what what it does it molds you into who you are today, Facts. whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. Facts. You know, mm -hmm. and, and you seem like you turned out pretty good to me. You turned out great. So how did you end up on that piano, man? Uh, let's talk so about that that. that. that house that they um, were at. With the barn, mm -hmm. my grandma's house, she had a piano on the pool table. Okay. And I taught myself how to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star one you time taught when yourself. I was six. I was, okay. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was like, dang, I taught myself how to do that. So I so I used to go over there, she'll show me how to play a couple of things, but 
when I went to my grandma's house, that's what I would go to is the piano and yeah. the pool table. Like, I'm was super it? good at pool, too. Come on, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> super good at pool. Yeah, yeah. trick shot champion type. This yeah. nigga right here, y'all. Y'all heard that, y'all. Don't believe the hype. Till man, you, you better go to my table. Instagram page. You want to see shots you ain't never seen. See if this nigga really get down like that, man. I'm trying to tell you. Say, all them trick shots ain't going to get you nowhere. All them trick shots, you're going to have to leave them behind, man. I ain't never been without a pool table. Oh, yeah? All your life? I ain't never been when when we moved from Oregon to Mississippi. It was a, a um a lady who had I forgot her name. She had like a little you can go buy some food or something like that in there, right in the projects, and it was a pool table in there. So that's what me and my homeboy go play pool over there all the time. Have when you I ever built. lost? Hell yeah, yeah, you ain't lost. You right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, you ain't lost. You play pool. a lot, you gonna lose. I'm super good at pool, like real, real, real good. Like I you be gambling? Nah. Yeah, because yeah. them niggas be ready to kill me, bro. I'm really good at pool, bro. Like for real. <laughs> so, so the piano thing, like that was your first uh, stroke to, uh, to draw when it came to the music, man. Like, uh, did you know at that point that you wanted to do music, or did you kind of bump into it later on? What I knew then is that somebody all over the world was gonna know me. I didn't know what for, but I knew that. Like even back then when I was a little kid, you know, and and right now fast forward, I get people hit me up from Africa, Russia, all over oh, the place, everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I didn't know I was gonna be a producer when I moved down here from Oregon. My dad bought me a keyboard, and so I I, I ended up playing it till I got good enough to play for a church, and I started playing for the church, and I ended up making a beat on the um, church keyboard. And my cousin was home from the, uh, for the All Star weekend. Jonathan Bender, he got drafted out of high school. I don't, I don't know if you ever heard of him. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, I, I definitely. When I was looking looking you up, I yeah. I, I, I seen that. Um, and and you and him pretty close. Yeah, that, that's 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 who got me started on the music. Yeah. So, so I ended up bringing the keyboard home to my grandma's house. That's where I was living, and he was there visiting for All Star Weekend, and I played the beat for him. He was like, "Man, you made that." He's like, man, I'm from the start a record label. He said, "You gonna be my beat man." And he really did start start the record label, and KLC was his beat man. Really, KLC yeah, was. KLC that's was a big man. move. So he, he basically well, that's that's who would mix and record most of our music until he got crack tracks. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Uh, his name Law. He with Rock Nation now, but that's okay. who I was shadowing up under him uh -huh. and a guy named uh, IG, which ATL Jacob is signed to him now. Okay. So fast forward, I'm shadowing up under producers. That nice producers. Went on to be not no shabby producers. Right? And then Mac Main, I was living with Mac Main. So these guys, you live with Mac Main before all the young money stuff, all this stuff. Man, how did you meet him? My cousin in in the NBA, Mac Main had a little song on the radio in New Orleans. He was gonna sign him to his label, but. Mm. I think Mac Main wanted like a hundred grand. He knew my cousin had it. He from New Orleans, you know, he was a little <laughs> smart on the business sense. We from Picking Union, I'm finna get try to get a hundred bands out of him. I got a song on the radio. My cousin didn't want to do it, but during that whole incubator stage, he was doing music with us and stuff. He was living in my cousin condo with me. Like, Mac yeah. Main, I met him one night at the Palms Hotel. Man, I never forget man, look, it. We he talked just and chopped it up. The number. Did he, you? he been had the same number like twenty years. He just changed the number. Why would he do that after having it so long? I'm pretty sure he had other numbers, but like, like if you had that number, you was you able to get contact it. Up, up until probably about two, three months ago. Yeah. <laughs> you got the new number. Nah, I ain't got the new number. I ain't, <laughs> ain't, ain't right right asking right for the new number. Yeah, that's my boy. But I ain't asking for the new number, nothing like that. Um, he can reach him if he needs to reach. Him. I mean, I just inbox him. Most of the time, we just talk on Instagram through the inbox. Yeah, inbox yeah, yeah. up until he changed the number. He had a. Um, Miami number back the last time I had went to Miami and pulled up on him, but I ain't, I ain't had So you one. seen him when he went to uh, Young Money and all I that seen stuff everything. happened? What all was the, it. were you proud of him when he well, went to Young Money? It was one of the most inspiring things because it's somebody I know. Like, I, I used to live with you, bro. We pulled up to Xavier University in one of my cousin's cars every day. Like, that was our everyday thing. Yeah. My cousin in Indiana, he had 14 cars in the mansion next door. I got the keys to the mansion. With mm -hmm. all the cars, you feel me? Sorry, cuz you probably didn't never know. No, me. You feel what I'm saying? We just grabbing a car, going to Xavier, and that's what uh, Mac Man would go over there and rap. Mm -hmm. And like, he'll, he'll just start freestyling that everybody crowd around us, bro. Like, wow. he, he was that good. What? He the only one rapping. Everybody just standing around, just listening to him rap, bro. Everybody, I'm like, I'm sitting like, that's my boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's your boy. <laughs> but uh, he, would, he would have me around like all the, um, like Super Blanca, uh, Jay Gutter, all them, that, you know, that Wayne had signed. Yeah. It was his real partners and stuff. They shooting basketball and stuff. I didn't know at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, well, actually, you couldn't own it at the time because they didn't they have. They didn't formulate yet. Yeah, they hadn't formulated yet. So when you when you see them formulate, and I'm not going to go into too much detail on it, but 
you when you see him make that move, did you feel like 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 he got a good deal on the move when he made it? Because he became the president of it. But he was just so smart. Like I learned a lot of stuff from Mac Man. Just the little time we was, you know, what I'm saying, live together, just on as far as the business sense. You know, what I'm saying, like he could have signed to this NBA player and had every where well, we had everything. We had every all the chains. We had all the cars. We had everything to, from the looks. It, it would have been it. But he knew, like he feel he knew something, something else. Greater. You feel what I'm saying? Like uh, he could have went a whole different direction. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? He knew something great. You feel me? Feel me? But he uh, felt something. Yeah, uh, that, that it was just crazy. I remember going and visiting him, and uh, after I had I had moved back from New Orleans, I had moved to uh, Mississippi, and I went back and visited him in New Orleans, and he, he had like a Magnum on some 20, 24s, 22s or something, and he had another car on some 22s or something. And he was uh, living in an apartment. Now, back when I was living with him, he had a busted up Chevy Chevy Tahoe. He remember that black Tahoe, but he used to get them A to B. You get those both A to B. Oh anyway. yeah. So I and then I walked in his apartment. He got a little fish tank with the little fish that hit each other in the head and stuff. Oh, I'm like, yeah. okay, you, you know, you come up. And that's when he told me he was like, yeah, you know, I just started fooling with. Um, it wasn't even Young Money back then. It was. Uh, I think it was squad or something like that. Squad up or something like that. Mm. Yeah, it, it was. Could've, it could have been Young Money, but it could have been like the very, very beginning first, yeah. stages of it. And I'm like, I, I, I congratulate because Wayne was already like one of the biggest stars on yeah. the planet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you know whatever he got going on for it to be huge it's too. It's huge. And, and that was just, a he, that was the peak of it. Yeah, just mm-hmm. from there, just seeing it just just go crazy. And I'm, I'm seeing watching them on 106 and Park. I'm watching them. Like bro, I was just living. With how did how much did that bro. inspire your 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 drive? A hundred percent. I'd have been around a lot of people that end up blowing and each time. Like even the JD Young situation. Like I met him with two thousand followers. I had five thousand. So to see you mm-hmm. go to three million, it just lets me know. Like man, it, you just got to keep going, and eventually you are gonna have whatever you you know whatever, whatever you're trying. But to that's get. so funny that you said that because I know a lot of people in that um, shoe would have been like. Why is everybody around me going, but I'm not gone at that point, at that time? Did you ever get I, that? Did you ever time. feel that? Nah, I, I knew about time. I knew about time. Uh, it, it, it's, it's something that's always been preached to me from day one. You know, when it's your time, it's your time. That's good. And then another thing, like, I was producing in Picky Union. Like, they didn't have another me at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was that good. So it was, it was like, I was cool with the, you know, the movement. I, yeah, I was, I, and like I wasn't getting my just due. I just, I knew I had to grow it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if I would have blew up back then, it would have been a whole different story. Mm. I'm young. I would have probably did stupid stuff with the money. You know what I'm saying? Like when I, when Jay the Younger blew up, I, I went and got everything I was supposed to have. You feel what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Like <laughs> crib, cars, wives, everything. Like I'm, I, you know. You Let's feel talk me? about like, Jay the Younger, man. Like, like. <sighs> I heard you say in another interview that his work ethic was like on a whole nother level. Um, what was it that, how, how did you guys end up just even coming together? He just found you? Cause you was doing music already. His older cousins, I used to I used to record his older cousin. I told you, this is my third generation. Okay. Yeah, so once, I'm, I've been doing it 22 years, once I hit 30, that's three generations. Man. Yeah. So I'm into my third generation right now and his older cousins used to record in my studio and um, I had I had set him up a studio at his at his spot, like I gave him the template. I told him everything to to, to go buy and stuff like that. So once JD Young started growing up, he would record by his cousin house because they had the best studio. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because I set him up right. So one time JD Young was doing a mixtape with Scotty Kane, and they called me to engineer it because they wanted you know Scotty Kane was a little bit more advanced they wanted a real engineer and they, you know mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. His, his cousin the, the rap that recorded him can't really record like me but he can get the job done shout out to Boona Boona that's his name anyway so when I recorded J.D. Younger for that tape it was a rap like, he didn't want nobody else to record him from that point on cause I'm so fast bro like I'm, I record super fast and, and it's fast and efficient and then like whatever you thinking of I'm finna do that already Cause I done recorded so many artists, like I know what you thinking already. Nine times out of ten, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And I was just, you know, it's like if you get stuck, I write too, so I I can throw you a line. You ain't stuck no more. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, you know. Just, what was the first song that went crazy stupid with for Jada Young and you that you produced that you knew like this is crazy? I didn't know it, but Mud Brother. Okay. Uh, 
at the time, I think the track I did for BG or Pimp C had the most views. There you go. Just stop right there. <laughs> you What's said that? the magic Anytime course. you say Pimp C in here, bro, you can just shut it down right there. We he got to stop. stop and talk about Pimp C every time. <laughs> Nothing else really matters at that point for me. <laughs> you could say, it's like you're going blah, 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 uh, blah, blah, funny. blah. That's so let's talk about Pimp. That's hard right there. <laughs> For you to be done rocked out with Pimp, work with Pimp. What song? I'm on my third generation. Man, true Steve, story. Steve, you be, heard it. Steve, you be, true story. True story. That was you. True story, little bitch. Yeah, that's Man. Me. I, produced it. I, did, I was so long ago, I didn't even have a tag. Heartbeats on track didn't even exist. <laughs> they called story. me OJ, matter of fact, back then. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, mm. so true story. You produced that. Yep. That's hard, man. Yep. Like, I, like I produced that whole how uh, was true it, story album. Actually, how yeah. was it working with with Pimp? Uh, I and ain't did you really, work with him face to face? Yeah, I ain't never recorded Pimp C. I've been on stage with Pimp C while he, um, while he performed my song though. That was dope. That was oh, hard. Okay. Yeah. What city was that? Hattiesburg. He performed for the Q. He did, did he, he knew you. Yeah, I was on stage with them. Yeah, I was on, like I, they performed my song. He knew me for sure. The last thing Pimp C ever told me was, was this um, a release party, and he put his arm around me and told me, whenever I start using live instruments, I'm out of here. Wow. He said, when you start using them, like, he said, I love your beats. He said, but when you start using them live instruments, he said, you gone. Mm. And that was true. I mean, could be. Was that could what be, set you, because, be, what, I mean, was that what set you apart once you started no, doing that? No, because he, he know he got the technology, right? It, it's a technology-driven I mean, thing. Isn't a piano a live instrument? It is. Yes. And I use a lot of piano. But you already were using a piano. Yeah, but, fact, right. Right. I'm just thinking right. about how technology is, bro. I'm more, I get it. I do have a couple of people that come in and like, you know, play the guitars and stuff for me like that, and I make the beat around them and stuff like that. But, you know, PMC was a big uh, Real. live yeah. instrument fan. Mm -hmm. you know? How that whole situation in, ended up coming about, though, I had a partner down there named 17 uh, that was signed to him okay. a long mm -hmm. time ago. Y'all okay. probably know 17, it mm -hmm. went viral all kind of time. But anyway, I produced that whole Pimp C Presents 17. I produced that whole album. Yeah. And Pimp C only did two Pimp C Presents, mm -hmm. Boosie and Webby and 17. Man, and that, that was live. Yeah. 17 actually was dope artists. I heard was, some of his stuff. Was dope artists. You know, um, just a, a, a litany of things that Pimp had his hand in. Pimp had his hand in, I was watching, mm -hmm. you know, to be honest so, with you. Yeah, so he came down there, he, he would come, uh, I think they did an album release party in Mississippi. Pimp C came down there. He came with the whole family and all, all this stuff. I didn't go to that, but I do remember everybody, you know, talking about right it. before the show. I went to the show. It was right after the oh, okay. meet and greet. I always be late. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, but that's what Pimp C so told me. That was, Pimp, was, was, was Pimp like, I guess when he when, when you knew that he had linked with 17, was that big for the city or? Huge. It was huge. Everybody it was knew. It crazy how it even happened. <clears throat> we in the studio. I had just met 17. He had paid me for an album for some beats. He paid me for all the beats up front and then left for like a year and didn't mm -hmm. pick out no beats. He said, I'll mm -hmm. be back to pick out my beats. I ain't seen him no more for a, a year. A whole year. A oh, year. That's crazy. He came back a year later. All right, I'm ready to pick him out. So he picked out all the beats. He came to the studio. We in the studio session. And um, somebody asked him, man, who are, who, who you, you know, have you want to do a song with? And he was like, man, I, I always want to do something with Pimp C. Because he had just bought a Yo Gotti verse. I produced that. So he was you playing with some paper. Yeah, he was like a quarter million up at the time. That's hard. You feel me? Um, he had just bought a Pastor Troy verse, a Bo Hagen verse. I produced all of them. He, like, he really helped me out. That was early on in my career. And then he said he wanted to work with Pimp C. And there was a guy named Mon at a, in our studio session. He had a camera. And Mon, he, he owned a clothing store in Gulfport. He was like, a oh, Moss Point, I'm sorry. He said, uh, man, Pimp C was just at my clothing store last week because he had just performed on the coast. He was like, I got his number. 17 said, call him. He called him. 17 walked outside. He came back in. He told me in Iceberg, he said, I need two beats. He said, I'm going to go to Texas tomorrow. I'm going to go do two songs with him. And uh, we made True Story on spot. Uh, Iceberg put a couple signs in there, too. Uh, and then he took another beat that I had made, and Pimp C ended up getting on both of the beats. The other one was Keith Sweat. I don't know if you ever, ever heard that one. I hadn't heard it. Uh, but that's hard to, it, it, listen, man. But look, look listen, let me just tell you. Go so ahead, so 17 walked out the studio, he came back and said, I need two beats. He flew back, he flew to Texas the next day, did a song with him. 
He charged him fourteen thousand for the verse. Wow. From what seventeen tell me, I don't know. Uh, he said he ended up giving him most of the money back and just signing him to UGK. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and and doing the project with him. You that's know, hard, wow. man. Yeah. Like I said, that's a hard story, man. For you to be had your fingers all in it, you was all up in that. I never would have knew that, man. Third generation, man. man I, I, I think Trade that's live. He's so young. Placement, Trade the truth. Trade the truth. Yeah, my, somebody. That, he on the man, wall up there with me. A guy named Smokey Loco had bought a verse from him, and, and that was my first time hearing an industry artist on my beat. It was wow. Trey. Trade the truth. How did it sound? Did you like it? Yeah, I like it. He, he, I that nigga, he hard, that like, nigga gonna go in there. I heard of him before, you know what I'm saying? But then, like, bro was bragging on because bro from Texas, the guy who who did the song. He knew it was gonna be fire. Man, what? Man, man Trey got a they got a, a a low tempo but hard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of just a crisp. You know what I'm talking? It's a grainy like, yep. but that whole gonna go. And, and and he still got fans. Right? Like, oh come on, man! Trey Shit, man! Yeah. Trey, Trey, uh, yeah. Trey, really? You know he had his situations this year, but uh, or last year. But I'm gonna be honest with you, man. When you don't put the work in, them guys done put in down there in mm -hmm. Houston, man. It's hard to get around that, man. That's history and legacy. Right. And they don't really need nobody. They already self-made. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And that's what I love about them. They came in at a good time, too. Oh, yeah. They respect it, too, for what they mm -hmm. accomplished. And they different. You can't take away their difference. Right. Let me ask you a question. So, okay, because I know <clears throat> artists is different, but with producer, like all of the old beats that you've done back in the days when you first started and stuff like that, do you ever still like listening to those? Because, you know, as people grow and you change, they usually hate. <laughs> you in Mississippi, you man. Hate. Mm. You you know, you know you've Crit? grown so much from it. I do know Crit. Crit used to, f uh, Big Crit used to be I'm uh, sorry, baby. Friend. Big Crit, my he, boy. He, he 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 blew up and he unfriended He me. blocked you. No, nah, he ain't blocked me. He just unfriended me. I, I, he switched I, up. I looked at him one time and said, ah, we ain't friends on him no more. Because, huh? see, I met him at the SEA Awards. Okay. Bro, I, I can still got the picture right now. I didn't know who they was. I'm the guy in there with the chain. You in that whole dark it up. And they yeah. came and asked me to take a picture. I got the picture, and you tagged me on Facebook. I yeah. still got the screenshot of the tag and everything. And, and then I think it, he blew up. He changed up. Yeah, he don't know me no more. Damn. But that's how I be, though. You know, I, I ain't this, hating I, on him. I'm I, proud I, of him. He probably got a lot of stuff going on. I'm proud of him, man. It's, it, it, it's our people, man. It's just because, you know, you, you want to keep the numbers down, Sorry. too, at the same time. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, a lot of people don't have, like to have their follow account up. You know, and me and him didn't have, like, a personal relationship. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, linked up at the SEA Awards before he blew up, man. That was like the, the extent of it, but did you like his music? Loved it, yeah. What was what? What did you like most about it? Cause he say he get, you know, he he get he get that 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 the, the Texas sound, that Houston sound. He get, he give it mo much respect. Facts. I what I like about it, um, probably his delivery. Yeah, like the, the the way he delivers his songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he depicts his words very well. Uh, make sure that you can hear everything he's saying, and he always has a message. Like always has some type of the you know some type of the message behind and stuff uh wait a minute i you know i don't forget nothing man oh rich boy man hey, where is he from he from down there alabama okay okay I, he, uh, yeah, he over there with uh, bread when it came in yeah i remember rich boy yeah he i seen a lot of stuff lately about him it don't look it don't it look I crazy i seen it too i got a couple I, of mutual I feel, friends yeah and, they, they, it, and yeah. i don't know how i i, I like to man I, I definitely would like to talk to him yeah just prayers up to him prayers yeah. up man for real yeah, anytime somebody going through it man you know because everybody can bounce back shout out to jaheen man where he at i ain't seen him lately there's a couple of them out there man you gotta think about it though man like that's I, precious I just, I just talked to my partner Yesterday about uh, basketball, like he, he was a very good athlete and didn't make it to the NBA. And I was just asking him, like, how did it affect? That, you? Does that mess with you mentally? And I'm, I'm pretty sure music does the same thing. Just imagine, all right, you have a hit song, a big song, and they give you two, three million, and you just fly through that because you 19 or 20, you know that. By the time you 22, 23, you're going to have another huge song, but sometimes Sometimes the next one it. don't come. You feel what I'm saying? And it's just like, now you got the pressure of everybody coming up to you, asking you this stuff all the time. I can't even step out the house without people bringing this, bringing that up. And it's just like, it's, it, it can I be was, easy. But, one thing, on, huge, on, but on. one thing with a huge song, would I, I've met people who've only had one huge song. They still even, especially if it's legendary, they still even get booked to go right. perform yeah, that one song. Yeah, but you got to be mentally. Hit, you got to be mentally. That's a mega hit. Right. A mega, mega hit. But uh, but but Rich Boy's song was hard, nigga. You remember when that first came out? 
<clears throat> I do remember the first camera. We do, but ask your kids. Oh, they ain't gonna know nothing. You about see what I'm saying? Hell but, no. but Not unless it comes on TikTok. <clears throat> but ask your kids if they heard Chopper style. Yeah, I'll, that's I'll, something. That's they. Everybody know Chopper style. Yeah, still right now, I still be seeing reels right now. Chopper style. This song twenty years old. What keeps a lot of these songs alive? The old songs to me is TikTok because they bring yeah. it right back in one. Because <clears throat> when my child tell me she knows certain songs, mm-hmm. I said, "How you? How you?" TikTok, they did a reel on there. Yeah. And that's the only reason she knows. She don't know the mm-hmm. whole song. She just know that part that they clip and put in facts, there. Facts. That's about it. So I remember the City Girls did that with Chopper Style song. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, a mega hit, bro, you still gonna listen to that 20 years later. Mm-hmm. Like, when it's a mega hit, and, and those are the ones that still getting booked off that one song. Mm-hmm. We'll get back to J.D. Young, and man, because like I said, he was, he, 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 was, he, when that happened, it was weird to me how it happened. The night that I, uh, the time I found out about mm-hmm. it, like, where you you being so closely knitted to him, kind of how how did when you when you heard about it that he had gotten killed, because he hit the internet fast. Facts. Mm-hmm. I, I tried to hit him up. Uh, I just said, "Tell me you're okay." And she, it, the message never even delivered. It never delivered. Mm-mm. No, my partner had called me. <clears throat> Wayne had called me and said, "Uh." Man, check on J.D. Young. I heard he just got killed behind my sister's house. How far is that from you? where you at? Hattiesburg? Like 35, 40 minutes away. Okay. Something like that. Uh, and and so I called him and he answered. So I just texted him. But I, w- we've had people tell us that before. Like, man, J.D. Young just got killed. And I called him and be like, man, don't be listening to that shit. I was hoping it was another situation like that. But was he just in the streets that that much? J.D. Young got killed for something that had nothing to do with him. I, d- I don't want to say too much online. Of course. But it ain't had nothing to do with him. You would think all that all that stuff, uh, all that stuff would have, you know, caught up to him. But nah, it, ha- it had nothing to do with him. The reason why Jay, they basically killed J.D. Young because he was the head of the ship. Head of the snake. They said if you if you kill, cut the head off, the body die. That's basically what it was all for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, it, you but you being that you because I talked to uh, DJ Chose and DJ Chose uh, he produced for Fredo Bangs and he say a lot of times he he said it was it was it it yeah it was dangerous being in the studio doing the stuff with him. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever feel that way when you was dealing with J.D. Young? Until I built my new facility, yeah. You felt that way? I mean, not, not really. Not not like something going to happen because, uh, you know, I always keep my studio pretty secure, but I, I understood it could, you know, it could be a, a crazy situation happening any time. One time I was doing a show in my city and I, I had booked J.D. Young in it. Um, I think I think it was Ace too. I forgot, but anyway, they kept calling me all day talking about twenty thousand dollars of us. It ain't gonna be no show or something like that. Like and we finna pull up over there to that studio because I know he over there. Ain't nobody ever pull up though. We so was that was just pump faking. I'm plugged in with some with some pretty good people down there. So like, uh. so the thing you gotta understand is you guys. How long did you would you say you and him work together from start to finish? 2016, 17 to 2022. Yeah. Wow. His whole career. So, I, when I met him, he had 2,000 followers. Yeah, yeah, you said that. And, and it's like, that was, do you, and I don't want to see, but do you think you'll ever deal with anybody that scale like that, a move like that ever again in your career? I don't know, because it was, it was unheard of what was going on with J.D. Young. Like, he took off like a wildfire. Like, it was crazy, bro. Like, I remember I didn't even know he had blown. Like, somebody had to come tell me that. Like, I had I had let one of my partners ride with me down to Bogalusa to go pick up some money that he owed me. J.D. Young owed me for some recording. And when we got back, I guess a couple weeks ago, I mean, a couple weeks later, he made a post and it was like, I just realized that was J.D. Young in the truck with me and Heartbeats when I rode with him to go pick up some, or rode with him to Bogalusa or whatever. I'm like, I'm reading the post, like, okay. It's just another guy recording my studio. Why are you saying that? Man, that boy said, boy, you don't know, boy, J.D. Young is lit. Boy, he went pulling out the, what you call it, showing me all the numbers. Like, mm-hmm. 
It's dope. So at first, I wasn't even making his beats. I'm just recording all his music and mixing it. I wanted to start seeing these numbers. I'm gonna practice on these nigga beats for a little while. You feel me? Yeah. So a year later, I showed him a beat finally, and he rapped on it, and that was the song I was telling you. Uh, the Mud. Mud Brothers. Mud, yeah. And, uh, he came out, put it on World Star, hit 4.4 million views. That was the first time I ever hit that many views. views. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, JD Young was different, bro. Like he, he might have did a lot of stuff, but his passion for music was unmatched, bro. Like he would have stayed in the studio all the time. If if I could just work twenty four hours, seven days a week, he wouldn't even left. He wouldn't even left. No, after I after I showed him that beat, his his albums prior to that, I didn't have no beats on. <clears throat> but his next album after that, I had fourteen beats on the. Mm. I had got five of my heroes producers on the, and nine of my own beats on the. That was Forever Twenty Three, which is his biggest album to to date right now. Wow, you and know every album after that, I'll be having like ten beats on a twelve beats. Like every album after that, even when he just dropped. <clears throat> it's crazy the stories they tell. Like like Double A said the same thing when he dealt with NBA Young Boy or, or mm-hmm. Kodak Black and how they scale. Like um, it's crazy how you know what I mean. Yeah, how crazy. quick you can't you don't know. It's like you just said like a fire. Just yep. take out you ain't nothing you could do but just try to figure out how I'll to get an algorithm. He first signed with Cinematic. We go out to LA. I'm getting Ubers, asking people to do it because I think Elimination had just went go one of them songs or Interstate. So I'm asking people, do they know JD Young? Blah blah blah. You know, I, I produce with JD Young. I'm thinking they know him because he hot as firecracker down down in the, the south. south. Yeah, they, don't, they know don't know him. I, I agree. I believe that. We come back a year later. A year later, nobody that I asked didn't know him. Nobody. Like, not one person. Oh, yeah, song. I know him. Even if they don't know him by name, as soon as I pull up and show them this, the song. this guy, the, the hair. Oh, the hair. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know him. got 23 Islands home. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. But when a, um, okay, so when a rapper um, finds a producer that they love to work with, um, they usually just stick with that person. Jay did. But then, okay, but with a producer, do y'all normally just, because most producers have a certain sound. Like sometimes some some people can listen to a song, not even know who produced it, whatever, and be like, oh, that's such and such. Because it's like they have a certain style. Even if you didn't hear the tag. <coughs> they definitely do that with mine. They have a certain mm-hmm. style. Yeah. But then if a certain rapper sticks with a producer too long, I mean, they only oh, have that certain nah. style and not switch it up. I was a little smarter than that. I went and signed Heroes mm-hmm. that I knew made other sounds that J.D. Young like. Got other okay. beat makers in there. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, if he come, I might show him all my beats. He might not be feeling them. Right. But I, I put, I got some of my heroes beats in the mix, too. You see what I'm saying? And he'll, he'll choose one of them or whatever. You know? That's what you're the all, style. All of my producers got placements on J.D. Young project. Every one of them. I, ain't, I don't have a hero that I haven't had on his project yet. Wow, that's I got, hard. I got, like, Six producers signed to me, but it's like thirty producers all together. That's yeah. what I was wondering: how yeah. many producers it's you have all nationwide? Yeah. Wow. wow. Do you think when when you what do Jonathan think about you when he see you he now? Call me all the time. What he be he saying? Proud. Like, damn. He proud is a good investment. Mm-hmm. That, that, he, I don't know how he feels about like you know Mac Main being you know slipping away from him and stuff like that. Uh, but he definitely started some things that uh, man. It probably might not even have gotten done if he didn't make it pro. Because mm-hmm. when he stopped doing the music, he gave me his studio. So I'm automatically wow. had an A1 studio. You see what I'm saying? Like, just gave me all his equipment. I and that's the about, studio you have right now? No, no, no. Of course. This, I was about to say. Nah, he the most. He got the biggest. Now. I know, but I didn't know if it, like, expanded and yeah. kept that one and just expanded bigger there. Uh, I started Heartbeats Studios in 2010. But, I, but uh, I think... I had been away from him since like oh six or something like that. I was just asking okay. how proud he is of you to see you. He loved how you he how you move forward because he, it, man. he planted, he helped plant that seed. Yeah, he lets that be known all the time, and I let it be known as, I, as, I as you should all the time. Yeah, for sure. As I remember you should. I, I moved down here in nineteen ninety six. He got drafted in nineteen ninety nine. Mm. So like so like when I moved down, I only had to go through like three years of the bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? So he come, he put my whole family on payroll. Wow. Oh my uncles, aunties, everybody mm-hmm. like everybody would get money up per month. You feel me? Like everybody had jobs and stuff that they did. That's a know? good write off too. Damn That's good write off. Mm-hmm. Wow. So. But why you had that um, gap? You said 2010 is when you started your Heartbeat Studio, but then you left him in um, 06. 
So you had a four year gap in between where you weren't at a studio. Yeah. Well, Why and what happened? I was I had moved to Atlanta right after Katrina for like a year. Uh-huh. But um, I had the studio because I had my studio in Picayune. Okay. That's what it was. Oh, okay. So I would come back and forth and stuff like that to come. Mm-hmm. I, and matter of fact, I had a travel studio too. So okay. like It wasn't really a travel studio, but I made it a travel studio. <laughs> it was a lot of equipment to be. <laughs> but Moving I had, around. Yeah, because yeah. cause when I moved to Atlanta, I didn't have like a whole lot of client, mm-hmm. clients and stuff. I was just you know going out on a wing and a prayer. Um, I was producing for Tyler Perry brother back then. He was Tyler Perry had just blew up, like mm. just just blew up. So his boy, brother, you been working. So his brother was coming with them crispy hunters mm-hmm. every time. You feel his name? Ember his brother Perry. rap. His brother had an artist. Oh, I had an R and B artist. artist. What's his brother name? Embry Perry. Embry Perry. Yeah. Embry Perry. And I ain't seen him since then. Like, <laughs> you won't. No, they done, they done he working for him time. up there. Yeah, I remember he was telling me Tyler Perry built him a barber shop or something like that, like a brand new one or whatever. And Tyler Perry just blew up, like mm-hmm. just just blew up. But uh, so did I, you know Tyler? Nah, I okay. ain't Tyler. But you know they from New Orleans. That's so what the I artist heard. That I was producing for was from New Orleans too. But right. it, we was all in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So they'll come buy some beats and stuff like that. But um, at that time I was coming like I might stay in Atlanta like two three weeks and I come back to uh, picking and come to to uh, record. Oh, oh, it was a studio called Finish Line Studios. That's where I, that's where my equipment was. Oh, okay. It was in the garage at, um, at my partner house. So I come back, every, you know, every now and again and come over there. Does anybody have, when you said a travel studio, I'm like, does anybody actually have a travel studio that they travel around, like, yeah. the United States and I mean, not, record? Not, it's just a laptop and some headphones and a mic. No, I'm talking yeah. like a, re- oh, yeah, that's all you yeah. need? I mean, go look at, uh, Yo, got it paid right now. They were just mm-hmm. recording his in his uh Maybach the other day. I think mm-hmm. it was Maybach yesterday. I just seen it. So you don't have to have like soundproof stuff. Man, a car is some of the best soundproof booth you get. Really? If you if you if I'm sitting in a car mm-hmm. and you sitting on the side of me and I'm talking to you with a normal voice, no, are you gonna normal hear anything voice, outside? No, but if you blast the music, I can hear it. No, you you don't, you don't blast the music while they're recording. Mm-hmm. All they recording is the mic. The, the mic. music down. You got the headphones on. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying. The only thing the, the car serving is your booth now. You feel me? Because it's like completely soundproof enough. Yeah, because okay. about you know, someone got the screen inside the car for you to hear anything. And you say your studio is the biggest studio right now. I ain't seen another studio bigger than mine. How big is it? I think it's 1,900 square feet, something like that. You gotta come see it. How many studios you have in there? Five. You just gotta come see it because it, it's it's. It looks like it might be a little small outside because it's you got to go downhill to the studio, but it's two stores. So when they mm-hmm. come, they be like, "I didn't even know this had a second story on the." But okay. yeah, I got a game room and I got a podcast room, five studios in there. I got a hookah lounge in there, full kitchen, four bathrooms. My A room booth big enough to put a choir in there. I guess humongous. Wow, yeah. I, I, I heard you say about your uh, your your producers. Who is the one that's making the most noise? Uh, with the ones who producing these beats that that's working on on well, that's working with heroes. Out of mine, yeah. Twisted Genius. Twisted Ten. Yeah, Twisted Genius. Like oh, he, Twisted Genius. You ever heard of Twisted Genius? Never heard of it. Oh, that's one of the biggest producers in the world. But yeah, he he a hero too. I, I ain't gonna say he under me. Like we just a team. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like um, I say, part, I kind of say partnership. Right, right. You know? yeah, it's Twisted Genius been. Been a hero before, like he signed a QC. Now he did the whole something to wow. prove album. Really? Yeah, he did something to prove that that song. He did the Forever Scar. He did the single with with him and Wayne on that album, mm. and the one with him and Future on that album. Like he he produced, he signed one of the biggest wow yeah, publishing deals. Well, yeah, but uh, but yeah, who he, who would be next? Probably Laco. Laco Laco got a lot of placements on 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 Key Glock. Uh, him and Joey, both okay. of them. Uh, they locked in good with Key Lock and uh and another artist over there, QC, I forgot his name. Um uh, Trill. Trill making a lot of noise in Louisiana. Like he produced for all the up and coming artists. It's like I ain't talking about like like just independent. I'm talking about like getting the two and three hundred thousand to like that stage. Like he producing everybody going to him. Uh, how do these guys uh run into you? Like do they do they feel like <clears throat> like if I can I'm going to join that group, or do you reach out to them, or it just happened some kind of way organically? Yeah, it just happened organically. Uh, at the time, I was seeking producers. 
uh, for JDM. It was, okay. it was really awesome, you know. I, I, I knew what we, what we actually needed, you know what I'm saying? And you, you need that beat team and that originality and stuff to, to stand out. And J.D. he rapped so much, bro. Like, <laughs> I knew I couldn't do it by myself. Like, I had he to He stays in the studio. Yeah, man. That man like we got probably a thousand songs right now. You know? I want to talk to you about that. Because the last one you say y'all made was Goodbye, which is ironically uh, uh, something that kind of matches... It's kind of like uh, the Mo Three Outside song when he left, and you know, it, it's like it's like the universe knows, you know what I mean? So he was doing a lot of good. Like what was what? Why that sound? But goodbye, you know what I mean? No, I'm talking about he was doing a lot of like prophesizing his. You know, oh, oh, like prophesying death, like like, like Tupac. It, even when he got killed, the song that was on his story, he's rapping about how he got killed, the exact way that how he, how it happened. In the song, really, oh, it was on his story when he died. Yeah, I, mean, I think he posted that little snip too. But yeah, do you believe that a lot of rappers um, <clears throat> speak things into existence? I don't believe in that shit. Yeah, no. You don't. I think you still a little hurt behind everything that happened. I just don't believe in speaking nothing into existence. This shit already planned out, man. God got all this shit written out already in my eyes. I, okay, I, I, okay. I don't. I don't feel like he was is questioning what he's gonna do with our life as we live. You yeah, know what I'm saying. So like, I just I don't even really believe in karma. I know so many bad people that got so much good shit. <laughs> Dude, what about the, the you, you, okay? You you just said you got thousands of songs that he done. You you have how many projects can you foresee putting together? And are you the one that's doing it, or or how does that work? Because when one dies, family and all of them start to tripping. I don't know if you experienced this, but I've talked to a lot of people who go through things where which they hurt. So you're saying who owns the right? Yeah, like to his like music? who's who's like like who's going in there talk? Because he probably he got a deal. So certain people with a deal, you got to deal Facts. with the company. I mean, right now is he he, he was, was with Atlantic Atlantic, and I think um, Cinematic was like facilitating everything. Um, he had a lot of leeway in his uh, in his situation. They not really too strict on that. I think Poe puts together the album, uh, which is his manager. He the one who picked out the Fever Twenty Three lineup, which was his biggest album. And um, and he just called me and said, "Hey, we need these songs. Let's get a mix and master and send it into the label." That's, that's, that's basically the whole process. It ain't no. I don't argue with his family or nothing like that. I don't know where. The money going as far as his sales. I don't he didn't have no see. kids or nothing. Did he have kids? He did have a kid, yeah. Okay, so yeah, he probably he looking out for his kid, I don't, I don't, hopefully. I don't I don't speak on. Yeah, because you never, you know never, you know what I'm saying? You, know, you never met his kids? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know his whole family. For okay, sure. so you yeah, did, sure, you, you, yeah. you, you knew him. How many children Close to J.D. Young, bro. Like, that's my dog, you feel me? But uh, he just had one kid. He had another one uh, on the way, but I think, uh, I think. I saw him happen and, and the baby just ended up not living. Really? Yeah, yeah. that was right before he died. Really? Right wow. before he died, yeah. Well, do you th so he could he probably could have a good uh, documentary or a good story Man, about he his. He was just about to do one. I, I'm writing a movie right now. He was going to be in the movie. I, I ain't had a chance to put him on my podcast. Wow. I, I had started all this stuff when he was in jail, mm. like my podcast, my mic video. Like, What's the name of your podcast? Uh, the Music Playground. Okay, The Music Playground. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was going to put him on it and all that stuff, bro. What inspired you to start a podcast? I'm going to be real with you. I, I'm horrible with these camera. <laughs> so I feel like if I do my own podcast, like I could start getting away from the, you know, the camera shot shit. So I just started my own. And then like. How did it work? It, 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 good, yeah. it helps. Yeah. Me and Dub G, uh, Big High, we, we, you know, we just talk about what, you know, what we got going on, but. I didn't have a lot of um, <clears throat> platforms reaching out to me either. You know, we in Mississippi, bro. People really ain't reaching out to Mississippi like talking about. You got to really be making some huge noise. So I was like, man, I'm going to just start my own podcast and, you know, kind of tell them what I got going on myself. Yeah. Wow, did you ever get to meet David Banner? Nah. Never met David yet? Nah, my cousin bought a beat from him, though, um, when, whenever he had the record label and I had the track outs to the beat. So like I, I even learned stuff from that, you know what I'm saying? Like from from David Banner. So, 
Think about it. You Mississippi, you got Alabama, you got Texas, you got the southern states. You got mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I be having struggle of trying to but South Carolina, they say they country, but I be looking at how they position. I'm sorry. But <laughs> if you think about it, it makes sense when you think about it, but they still the South. Sound like a pimp. <laughs> oh, I guess I don't know. In Atlanta, when people said Atlanta wasn't the South, I know you. Boy, that was, so that was crazy. I oh, had them stories on here. Oh man, I can so imagine. Bad. We was in Atlanta, and well, I didn't wear it, but seventeen full UGK regalias. Yeah, while we in Atlanta, in man. the studio, man, we was in the studio when that thing aired on the radio. Yep. And when you walked outside, what did people say? What not? Mm -hmm. They're not feeling. They ain't, <laughs> nothing, ain't nothing. nothing going down like that. They but say uh, Miami's the South too. I've heard some people. Miami is the South. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying the way it's positioned. But I, at the yeah. end of the day, I'm just saying that to say, do you feel like you know, with the way things are, are positioned and the way you guys scale, you guys are scaling like crazy. You guys are doing music, being recognized within your own realm, like you said. We got a chitlin circuit. And, and and nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it, you basically got, go platinum. You can you could go yeah. you could go gold. You don't yeah. need much nothing. You can they do got it. artists that do it all the time right now. But what do you mm -hmm. think when they say like when they were calling me goes like the mumble rappers and stuff like that? It, just because it, we from the south and they up on the east coast. You see what I'm saying? To me, that's just us again hating, think, on, hating on somebody. That's all I do. I can read with that, but I think it's the, the different dialect too. Like me and you talk different than Thanks. Thanks. we go yeah. up there. You know, I go up there a lot. But but still, like, past the dialect, you should still be proud to know the black man winning. Like, why why are you getting upset because he's rapping in a different pattern than you to the point where you don't like Southern rap? That's weird to me. You and Ice, Ice T just, I had an interview with Ice T, and Ice T was talking about culture. And he says the different cultures are just because you're from the South and you speak a little different. Yeah, we just had this conversation. You know and, and, and so since I speak a little different, I'm doing it different than you up there, you don't like Southern rap. To me, that's weird. That's kind of weird. To me, New York talk different than us, but there's plenty of people I, I like up there. Yeah, you who do you like in New York? Uh, Fabio Hart. Fabio, yeah, you, you listen to and he yeah, and he's like, uh, yeah, he hard, he hard. I ain't gonna lie, Scarlett hard too though. Yeah, Scarlett, Scarlett <laughs> going crazy. She scares me right. Now. She going she crazy. Have you seen her? Like. She got a scar on her lip. Yeah, she oh hard. yeah, you told me. I showed you that. Yeah, yeah. Scarlett going in. But I respect that she used. Her deficiency as a, a a benefit, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, because what? then she know people gonna talk about it anyway, so might as well. Mm -hmm. She can rap too. She ain't just she's spitting the bars. No, nah, mm -hmm. she's a, she's a hundred percent New York. New that's York. What, that's what they love. That's about what her. they like, do. Yeah, she's a hundred percent New York. The way she talks, the slang, the beats, the the reverb they put on the songs, like it's all New York. Do you think? Because what's been happening lately in New York and on the East Coast, well, New York especially. It's been the women rappers that's been scaling more than any men over the last five to probably seven years. Yeah, women doing anything. Am about. I right? Yeah, women doing anything. You got about. Cardi B, Nicki Minaj. You got all these different women, right? Remy mm -hmm. Ma. Like the women is pretty much and uh, Young M.A. Mm -hmm. They 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 holding it down mm -hmm. for New York. Well, you know, I don't know. The guys rapping the, the New York stuff is a, a little different. Like I, I can see New York getting into it, but like. It's hard to get it, that New York stuff into these clubs and it, stuff. It there. never was. You feel it? never saying? was. But the females don't just be on that sign. No, they, they be, be they mixing everything. in the South. They yeah. mixing. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. What you about to say? Um, earlier you were talking about um, the South, the North, all of that. How do you feel about or do you agree with a statement that says, like, example, BET Awards and stuff like that, that they don't really recognize, like, a lot of um, Southern rappers Southern, you know, um, entertainers and so forth. I didn't know they did. Who have you seen them recognize? I ain't watched the BET Awards. <laughs> I mean, either. I'm, I I'm just saying, like, uh, no, it was just brought to my attention when I started thinking about it. I'm like, hmm. When you think about the, I guess when you, what you're saying is like when you think about some of the ones that scale down here, like yeah, there's so many great. I used people. to say this. I would always say this, like, I, I and, and it's reason is because of the positioning, right? Mm -hmm. You'll see a papoose on, on uh, say, uh, uh, The Breakfast Club, but you've never seen DeRoe on there. He'll prod platinum artist. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> they be looking out for their own kind. And, and ain't nothing wrong with We just have to look out for our own kind. Shout out to DeRoe. He'll be there here this weekend. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I had just talked to him last time. I was, he was supposed to lock in the studio, but I had a lot going on. Man, I love to hear you. Y'all got some stuff together already. Nah, that was gonna Y'all be need our to first get it time. together, man. That was going to be our first time. Yeah. Tell me about how important KLC was to your career or has now, been. That's, that's big, bro. And then for the fact, like, he still supports me right now. You That's my boy. Like, he gonna he do it. He gonna right do now. it. And and it's just cool to have that in your corner. Like for the past twenty years, like like bro, keep going. You doing your thing, bro. Keep going. Keep going. You know what I'm saying? Anytime you need for, for some advice or some comment, you know. But just to have somebody like that in your corner. Over you know over these years that's inspiring right there. It he just, gonna do it, bro. Yeah, just 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 to know that he knows that I'm doing good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, I remember standing the night by this dude's house. I remember him and he was recording the the, the Soldier Slim and the BG album. I remember hearing songs on that album before it ever came out. Uh, all kinds. Of, I remember walking in his house and seeing the plaques that were all the way mm-hmm. to his roof. It's like one day that's gonna be me. You Man. feel me? Yeah. So you say you've been doing this for three generations now. I'm in my third. Yeah. And a lot of beats that you have produced have been very very successful. Um, many people can't say that say the same. So how do you stay so relevant and keep producing beats after beats after so many years? To me, I, I think it's the piano. I think it's the piano, and it's just that's just that's just me because a lot of people nowadays they just piecing stuff together on the beats. That's they go sample something and then you know put a little drum together and send it off to their homeboy. Their homeboy do the hi hats and then the other dude do a snare. You know what I'm saying? Like, but. Um, when when I learned how to play the piano, it just kind of like opened up my mind to like endless amount of loops and stuff. You know, instead instead of having to wait for the next hottest sample or something mm-hmm. like that, I could just go down and create play, your own. yeah, create what I need to create. And 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 from there, I've noticed that the only thing that separates the the beat mm-hmm. is the, between generations is the drums. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's just the drums. That we got the same piano. The piano ain't changed in, in in hundreds of years. The guitar ain't changed. I'm saying they're the same instruments. You just putting them over different types of drums. Like the 808 changes, the bass changes. If you can keep yourself up to date with what's in, and then also make new stuff that ain't you know thought of, you can stay you can stay relevant. I don't have a beat that collects dust on my computer at all. So Everybody how versed are you at playing the piano? From one to ten. Scar storage. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. But my brother, my younger brother, the mm-hmm. one that I inspired, mm-hmm. he way better than me at piano. Really? Way better. See what happened to me was, remember I told you I played for church? Yeah. Once I made that first beat, it was a rap on playing learning this instrument to play to live. Play, mm. Now I'm now I'm learning the instrument just to make beats. So you, you don't have saying? to be like really versed to. No, you just have to know it. You got you, okay. you got to be able to hear what goes together. Okay. If you can't hear the notes, because like certain keys they just don't go together, mm-hmm. and people do that all the time. And they'll put the stuff in. There. I'll be hearing mm-hmm. it all, you know. But uh, you just gotta, you know. I'm really good at piano. I used to play for church and stuff like that. I'm just saying, my brother and Scott Storch stuff is better. Mm-hmm. They, they, you they know, they, you know John Legend. Live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Scott um, Storch. Hmm? You don't Scott. know who Scott is? Yes. I heard the name. He, 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 that, that, that Dre beat. Uh, what? Guess who's back? All of them. I think, I think, Dre, think Dre was had him on payroll like five thousand a week. Yeah, or yeah, like yeah. That yeah, was his boy. And he'll come play all the keys on top of it. top see, three producers, man, all the time. You said you do top it. three producers of name all time. Name your top three producers of all time. Any genre. The ones that inspire me the most. Top mm-hmm. three. KLC. Hey, that's my boy right there, man. Drummer boy Fresh. Drummer boy, he up there on the wall with me. Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh always jumps somewhere. In you know, that's what my boy said. You remember in New York, the one mm. uh, my, my, my Andre say he, he, you can't get around uh, what he did. Other, I got other producers that inspired me along the way, like um, Just Blaze. When I heard that, Just Blaze. When I heard that. Welcome to New York City. Man, to me, that was one of the coldest beats I ever heard at the time. Bro. Welcome to New York City. So, like, you know, stuff like that inspired you. Get in the studio and try to make something just as cold. But Manny Fresh, KLC. I had just moved down here in 96. So, man, it was on flame. And, like, Cash Money No Limit was, like. Crazy. That's one of them your two top 96 groups. 96 to 99. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say. 
I top think, top the record like like dude the, the South had I think the record my favorite album was Gorilla Warfare. Okay, Gorilla okay, Warfare. okay. Like is there a beat that you? I know you still have to answer to your top three, but is there any beat that you have yeah, ever? Yeah. All of them? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. is there any beat that you've ever heard that gives you goosebumps? Like every time you hear it, you just get like goosebumps because mm. it's that good. Maybe the first time I heard it, but not every time. Yeah, who, who, who was that? It? Uh, sh uh, who that? Shorty Red on the track. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that strip club is Strokers. God, damn. It's Strokers, <laughs> man. It's Strokers, man. I was at Strokers when I heard that, man. And the fucking bass come down. Boy, ain't mm, that who that? Yeah. Shorty Red on the track. Man, uh, like Shorty Red a hard nigga, man. I liked it that. Uh, Oh, they want some. Ain't that cold? Man, and Fresh made that beat. That beat was That old go stupid. Man, and Fresh nah, nah, ate nah, that nah. old. People still use that right now. Nah, nah, nah. Your boy, yeah. uh, uh, Yellow Beezy just used it. He boy used that one. What crazy. is the most played beat? Like, not played. Remade. Remade beat ever. Yeah, I don't Do know. Do you know? I don't know. Probably can Google it, but... <laughs> The most remade beat. Yeah, yeah, like even it could be even something from back in the days because you know, yes, people create new stuff, but they get inspired by something old and add it into it. I don't know. I, I have seen a uh, couple songs. It just came to my mind. I was wondering. Your list like, was biased as hell because when you start doing that, you know, when you, I started thinking about Kanye, man. Yeah. And 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 my boy, I, I interviewed Malik Youssef here. You, them niggas, man. Malik Youssef. He he be with Kanye. Oh, okay. Them niggas is hey, like you got your thing. I'm yeah. just saying, there's some cold niggas out here, man. Crazy, man. Man, crazy. hey, listen, man, this serious, bro. Yeah. Doctor Dre. Yeah. It's serious. Like you got some Timberland. I gotta give him his props. Yeah. And Pharrell, you got when you start going around the, mm -hmm. the whole world, United States. I, I was a fan of Pharrell and them creativity, but like I like to hear that music when I make a beat. They just, there's was just a bunch of robot sounds. Yeah, it like was that. it was like nerdy. That, I like to hear that music though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Even, even Timlin had the music in there. He, he might have some crazy little sounds in there, but he gonna hit you with them strings and them chords and all that stuff like that. Neptune's would too, but what did you think when you heard KLC fuck them other niggas? That beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. I was, Jaw drop. I remember that. You like what the hell? I remember that. Yep, yep, yep. It's it's stuff like that you remember. Like speaking that, of that, Mr. Magic, I was recording. I was, you know, I was doing his album when he when he uh, before he passed. He died on his way to to me. Wow. Yeah, he was on the was way to my a, party. Yeah, he, he had a wreck. Him and Roy Jones was my special guest judges. I was producing the body head headbanging volume two at the time. And, and I was calling Magic all night. I'm thinking, he stiffed me. I'm like, man, you know, I didn't want to charge me nothing. You know, I was working on the album. So I'm, I'm calling him all night, man. Next thing I know, Roy Jones called me crying. So you heard that same night? Yeah, I'm wow. thinking, he stiffed me, bro. Like, But that, I'm at the hospital. We hadn't heard about the wreck or whatever, man. Bro, you know how, how that feel to have a boxing champion of the world mm -hmm. call you crying in your ear? Boy, that's crazy. So Roy he Jones, did. he did. That was his best friend. Magic and Roy Jones, that's his best friend. How Magic did you wife do it? and Roy Jones' wife is best friend. She died wow. too. Wow. Magic wife and him died. Died at the same time. That was about 10 miles out of they my city. They had kids? Yeah, she was in the car too. She didn't die. She broke her arm. Yep. yep. Imagine Ooh. how she must have been dead. Uh, I, I like to Man, it was crazy, bro. Like, that was crazy. That was a crazy time. Yeah, he called me. I was at the hospital because they wouldn't let me go back there. I was trying to lie to him and say I was his brother. Police, so, police getting. So it was. He was. Where was he at when he had that wreck? Like right outside of Lumberton. It was right, right by Hattiesburg, about 10, 15 minutes. Did they know what there. happened to cause him the wreck? I heard him drunk driver ran him off the road or something. But yeah. The, but the car blew up and everything. Like the I, car I, blew I think, up. I think. I think magic. And this is just a story I've heard. I think magic probably would have been straight. Uh, the daughter got thrown out of the car. But I think Magic was still in the car or something like that. And uh and it and it it, it burnt up and I and I I believe he burnt it and I don't know. That but these are stories that I've been told over the years. I don't know the actual, you know what I'm saying? Uh but I know that they I what I do know is they wrecked. The only only reason the daughter lived was because she got thrown out. 
Mm. Probably. If, well, if, right. if, the, if the stories that they telling me, and these are probably from family members and stuff here, you know, I get bits and pieces here and there. But if those stories are correct, yeah, because they, they, they said the car caught in flames. Mm. Okay, and I don't, run me down on how Roy Jones calls you. He tell you, man, he they had a wreck. Mm -mm. We don't know. We already knew about the wreck because uh, we didn't know at first. All I know is I'm calling Magic. He ain't answering the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then one of my partners has a police officer. That's his partner. And he called and said, man, we got your boy up here at the hospital. He just got to a wreck. But never told us if he was dead or not. But it's crazy because the it was probably the most successful party I ever threw. It was packed wall to wall. I'm talking about, I made some of the money off the party that night. And he, they didn't even show up, bro. Damn. Roy Jones, he ended up getting called to Russia. He couldn't come. He had to, he had to, something with a fight. He had to, you know, he, he still works for HBO. Mm -hmm. So at the last minute, he told me he wasn't coming anyway. But Magic called him all night. He didn't answer. And, uh, so then uh, I had, I had ended up talking to Roy. It was like still like two o'clock in the morning. Roy called me back like four something. And that's when he was crying. He just kept saying, man, he did, man, he did. He so did. he had already told you previously that you were in a wreck, but he just didn't know that he had he had died yet. Yeah, we talked about him being a wreck. I, mm. I think I knew about him being a wreck before Roy Jones. Before Roy Jones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because good happened right told outside you? the city. Oh, so yeah. new no, police officer. Mm -hmm. But then you travel. drove. You went, you went straight yeah, there. I went straight to the hospital once I found out. Like four in the morning. No, it was like two. It was right after the club. Okay, right. I didn't, we didn't find out because we stayed at the hospital for a long time, bro. Like hours. And then Roy Jones finally called and told you know told me he had, he was dead. Wow. Wow. Him and his wife, and the little girl was just in her room, probably bandaged up. Yeah. So if you think about it, that's, I told you I wanted to work with Soldier Slim because I was young. And my, him and my cousin were best friends. I'm thinking I'm about to, you know, he got killed, Mr. Magic. PMC, JD, that's a lot, bro. Well, yeah, and you and you and you, you start thinking about it, working there or being in the midst of these people, man, and and it's like, dang, man. But Ma Mr. Magic, man, he was hard on that. He could rap, dog. I love. We were putting together a tight ass project, bro. Because you remember the bottom. You didn't head. finish it. We on it was eight songs in. The Body Head Bangers Volume One is the one that had the I Smoke I Drink. So then. Um, Roy Jones was putting out a volume two and had done got magic and a couple other people and stuff. We was going to Magic House every day recording. Well, not every day, but every other you know, mm -hmm. week going down there recording and stuff like that. Wow, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Who would you now want to work with that you have not worked with? Because you have worked with so many people. Hmm. Who could you make magic with? Really anybody for real? Anybody want to work with me? I'm ready to work. Ready to work. Uh, uh, okay, not everybody always talk about Drake, but I'm like, I, it'd be I don't cool want to work with Drake. <laughs> uh, it'd be cool to work with Drake, but I like to work with artists that that let me put in my creative control too, cause, uh oh, cause I I could I could write real good. Mm -hmm. Like I'm real real good at writing. So like, not saying that you just need a ghostwriter, but you know, just don't just come in here. And, and just have me hit and record, like use me, like use all my tools and my keys, mm -hmm. you know, and my and my um my my magic. Like let me mix your songs, let me help you. You know what I'm saying? Like some people just they, they just want to hit record. But. Have you worked with anybody other than rap? Yeah, like yeah, who? The, um, blues artists, a uh, couple blues artists is local down there. Uh, R and B artists. No country western. Have I worked with a country western artist? Nah, I think it's one that records in my studio, but he, he records down there with my brother. My brother does most of the live music. He's a live musician. Yeah. So mm -hmm. He put a guitar and a drums and a piano. Wow, he bad boy. Man, he bad. And he can write too, bro. Like, he super bad. Like, he like a Tyler Perry turned 10. Damn. Mm -hmm. When they find out about my brother. It's a rap. And I ain't shit compared to my brother. <laughs> I'm telling you, my younger brother, he's been growing up studying me. He, like, he, I, I, I could probably mix music better than him because he, he, he's just now really getting into a studio like mine because like, he was living in Colorado. So, so he's doing more playing live, but now he's got a chance to be in the studio and create mm -hmm. music, create songs and stuff like that. But he don't sing or, or yes, rap? Yes, he does. He, he does sing. Be, and man, that boy don't hit an off note. 
he don't hit an off note, period. He sings, he doesn't he rap. A dog. No, he don't, he don't rap. No, it's, he all, it's gospel. He do gospel. He oh, do that's like dope. pop. Not just gospel. He do, he do pop. He do like mm -hmm. jazz. You know what I'm saying? He don't no, no rap at all. Mm, that's mm -hmm. good. It's like we ain't, we ain't in each other's lane at all. At that's, all. Like, that's dope. In each other's way. But he'll bring you a different type of clientele to your studios. Facts. Mm -hmm. Which wow. is dope. He what? done recorded with a lot of people. Man. That's good. I tell you, man, I appreciate you for coming on Boss Talk 101, man. Um, definitely enjoyed it. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to rock out with you? Uh, hit my Instagram, Heartbeats ENT. It got, it got the uh, the booking number in the bio, Heartbeats ENT. At the end of the day, if, if somebody, you know, had to go back and look at something you said and you wasn't painting a picture, what, what would you want them to remember by, about you? How hard I work. How hard I work, bro. Cause everybody down there knows how hard I worked. You see what I'm saying? Like, I I, I was out the studio for one week, and that was my honeymoon in 22 years. Wow. Besides, maybe I might get sick and can't show up a day or something like that, which I can't remember a time. But I go to the studio every day. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and there ain't too many people that's able to block out life and and do that. You see what I'm saying? Like, I didn't go have a million kids. I didn't go gang bang and stealing cars and just. You know, just doing crazy. You got to focus on what you want. Man. I got a, 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 one more thing I wanted to ask. Because um, we don't just have adults watching. We be having some kids be watching, too, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you never know. A child might be out here being abused by their father or stepfather or whoever. Mm -hmm. um, or somebody's going off to foster care or just in a bad situation at home and watching it and feel depressed. What can you... Give them a word of encouragement. What can they do? I mean... Because you were that kid at one point. I don't even know what I did, bro. I just really just kind of just leaned on the music. Like, the music is what, is what got me. I ain't gonna lie. When I started playing the piano and when I moved down here, it's just like, find you something to do for one if you're a kid. You know, whether it's sports. I played four sports, too, and then played music and stuff. So, you know, you just got to push through it. No, it, it really is no cheat codes to it, bro. I done been through everything that you could think think of before I was 11. Crazy house, all kind of stuff, bro. Like, before I was even 11 years old. And and I was able to push through it, you know what I'm saying? So if, if I could do it, I'm pretty sure they can, too. You just got to focus. Focus really the hardest hardest thing to do, but it's, it's the best ingredient to success. And you didn't have nobody that was, cause you know, sometimes some people be like, well, this football coach, he took me under his wing or somebody, you know, mm. adult wise helped motivate me. Nah, you I, did it by, by when yourself. I moved to Mississippi, yeah, uh, I told you three years later, my cousin got drafted to the NBA right. and he started the studio, but I think I was like 17 then. Mm -hmm. Man, we love you, brother. For sure. Say, I'm man, if you ever want to come back and you're pushing, <laughs> pushing something back, out or, sure. or if some of them artists come from down there and me and you, because I like your number in there. For sure. Um, if it's artists coming up to Dallas that you know that's, you know, needing that recognition, that really put that work in like mm -hmm. yourself. Because sure. shout out to Dame Dash who said, I'll never work, mm. hustle harder for a man than he hustled for himself. Facts. So if you see somebody hustling like you hustling, Facts. then you say, hey, man, I'm going to link you up with Boss Talk, sure. man. Because sure. like I, I said, we, it, we, just, we, just, we just like to show love to certain mm -hmm. people. And that's why we so, it's, it's kind of weird how we do it because it got to be something there that means something. Yeah, I, I fuck with it. Man, mm -hmm. check it, man. For sure. It's been another great segment. I appreciate y'all. Boom, a Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.